So this is where you pitched, right here. 1995-96 World Series. It's pretty cool. I didn't even know they had the field marked out like this, but that brings back some great memories. Boy, I'm at a really cool spot right now. Uh, Greg, man, I, I can't even imagine what's going through your head. I mean, Greg McMichael right here, he pitched in the 1995 and 96 World Series. We're on the old location of where Fulton County Stadium was. This is where the Atlanta Braves played from 1966 to 1996. And, and, and even 1965, the Atlanta Crackers, a uh, minor league team, before uh, the Braves moved to town, they played at the stadium. A lot of great things happened here. Greg, you pitched here, didn't you? Yeah, it's a pretty special place. I haven't been here in a long time. I think right after we uh, opened up Turner Field, uh, you know, this, with nostalgia and stuff, we came back and looked at the old park. But uh, it's a pretty cool place. There's a lot been happening here since then. Wow. Hey, let's walk over to the mound. <laughs> so let, let our viewers see here. So what they have done, they took down a stadium. You can see it says Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Uh, that was the foundation of the stadium. And where the ball field was, we're standing on it right now, and they have taken bricks, light bricks, colored bricks to outline or to notate where the infield was. This became a parking spot. Uh, the Braves built a new stadium where the Olympics uh, were. You could just see a little part of it over there. That was, that's Turner Field. And the Braves left there, what year? Uh, we left there 2017, I believe. 2000, yes, 2017 we opened up Truist Park. Yep, uh, 2017 they left, and uh, now that's Georgia State University. Uh, so let's go on out to the mound. This is where you were at. Um, so this is where you pitched, right here. 1995-96 World Series. Pretty cool. I didn't even know they had the field marked out like this, but that brings back some great memories. Wow, There's man. a lot of things happened on this field. Of course, being with the alumni now, working with the Alumni Association, we've got uh, guys who played here from 1966. And uh, so we've got good memories. You know, the, the field wasn't always in great shape because it was a dual sport. We played football and, and baseball on it. So there's, there's some pretty crazy times. And of course, Ted Turner did some pretty funny things with ostrich races and and different things on the field early on but once i played in the 90s uh, it felt like home to me so this was a lot of great memories my first game i ever pitched was on this mound in 1993 against the cubs and uh, obviously the world series uh, we played here in 95 when we won it we all dogpiled over here right in between first baseline and and uh, the pitcher's mound mark wellers was on the bottom and I came running in from right field there where the where the bullpen was over there by that AT&T van and had to make the long trek with bad knees all the way to try to jump up the pile. So when you, when you watch the videos, I'm like the last person to, to get on uh, to get on the pile with my jacket and gloves on. And of course, over there is our, was our clubhouse and dugout. So this, this is uh, this is pretty cool. They don't pile anymore, do they? <laughs> yeah, they do. They do pile on. I mean, it just <laughs> seems like they're just jumping, you know. Uh, yeah, on. yeah. They they don't right. They don't pile. They kind of they kind of dance. I call it dancing together. That's yeah. kind of more. Well, I can understand. You get hurt under that <laughs> yeah, pile, that's right? right? There's a lot of bodies. A lot of bodies that uh, they go on top. So this would have been a view, man. Get on that bit mound. Yeah. Oh, by the way, everyone, check out this cap. He's wearing. I asked him to wear this cap, by the way. So this is the the cap he was wearing when he pitched in the 1995 world series yeah it's got a should have a patch on it it's right? on the other oh, side patch right there yeah there we go and uh he let me put that cap on i, <laughs> I got to wear a real uh world series cap and this would have been this would have been pretty much the view yeah this seems like a long way yeah of course, well there's no backstop it does seem a little bit longer uh, i'll bet though uh when you when you're up there and you're pitching for for real though that batter looks pretty close. <laughs> yeah, he can. He can, especially guys like Mark McGuire that are huge, uh, guy like that. But you know, one of the memories I have too is with the day uh, the press box got caught on fire, and so we had just traded for Fred McGriff, 
and we were all in the outfield shagging fly balls and there was a one of the sternos caught fire it right right beside the press box and john sherholtz is in his in his box up there and all of a sudden we started seeing smoke and then within about two minutes there was this big boom and this is during the game no it's in bat batting practice oh, okay and so we start backing up and we're on the warning track and there's just flames coming out of the out of the press box well they finally put the fire out and what's amazing is that we still played that night wow. they, that would have never happened today so the bank of lights that were up there did not work so they had those lights out and i remember coming into pitch that night fred i think hit a couple home runs and um and so i'm pitching in the the bank of light it's dark on this side of the field and so i remember pitching and that, that was the day that fulton county stadium caught on fire but uh we ended up winning the game and then we were off and running and well, chasing, chasing important. down the giants yeah <laughs> so tell us about your world series experience what, what was that like what's it like let me get this thing zeroed in on us what's it like in the postseason for a player the postseason is really interesting because you've got two seasons actually that happen. So number one, you play 162 games and you're completely worn out because it's just a long grind between spring training and the season. And then all of a sudden you get to October and there's a whole new season that starts and that's the playoffs. So the playoffs, think about you're hanging on every pitch and you're you're just stressed out over every situation because the game could be won or lost at any time. It's just really, really tight. You're playing the best teams in the league and, and all of baseball, so it's really narrowed down to the field. And so you're going against all the best pitchers, you're going against all the best hitters. And so the season, the off season, or the, the postseason comes along and now it's just another grind. So for a whole month, the stress level goes up, the adrenaline goes up, so emotionally, it's a lot different than during the season. I, I kind of attribute the, the season's like a marathon and the postseason's like a sprint. So then, imagine running a marathon and then having to run a sprint. You know, it's just, it's just really difficult. And so when it's all over, you just kind of collapse. I mean, your body literally is worn out and you've actually, uh, you get sick and you know, just the, it's just a huge relief of stress, but, um, you know you've accomplished something that's pretty amazing and of course when you get the chance to get that ring on your finger and Knowing that you've accomplished something that very few have it's it's pretty amazing Nama, what was perhaps the most stressful time with you in, in the World Series? Can you talk about that moment? Well um, Yeah, I mean there were there was multiple stressful times and typically I would always say it's always stressful when there's a man on second with less than two outs I mean, that's the most stressful because typically whenever I was pitching I was coming in behind Greg Maddox or Tom Glavin or John Smoltz and these guys had pitched seven or eight great innings and then you got to come in and save the game or you got to you got to save it for the next guy that comes in and so I think all those situations late in the game if anybody's watched postseason baseball you know that as the game gets towards the end it's tougher and tougher to get those guys out but also every single pitch can make a difference because usually the game you're one run up you're one run down the game's tied so you have a chance of being the goat or the hero uh, and it's just it's just uh, there's just the stress level just increases plus you you get you buy into um, the fact that you've been watching the game and you're invested in it and and you're having to do this on top of uh, what you've already done during the season so it just kind of all kind of builds for you and then w of course as human beings we always put more pressure on ourselves than anybody else yeah was there a real I guess the high point was when you won right, right. Um, yeah the low point I mean if you want to talk about low points it would probably be 96 when we were up three games to one and um, you know, and we lost, and so that was that was very difficult. That uh, the Orioles can tell you about that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Twice. That's I think. right. That's 71 right. Seventy-one and seventy-nine. Well, yeah, and we we just experienced that with the, the current Braves in the National League Championship, where yeah. or in the World, you know, National League Championship, where we had we were one game away from going to the World Series. And we we're up three to nothing on the Dodgers, and you know that's the way baseball baseball happens that way, and and that's that's probably a lot tougher pill to swallow then getting beat in the seventh game and um, but when you when you're up so much and then you you let it slip away it's just something that, that stays with you for a while <laughs> now you beat the, you beat the Indians mm -hmm. and that was a good that was a good ball club yeah I remember man they had a fantastic year mm -hmm. and then in 96 you played the Yankees mm -hmm. 
when you lost to them. And that was the first, if I remember right, that was the first of their six year kind of dynasty. I mean, some people I've heard said that's the finest ball club that's ever walked the field. Would you yeah. say that's the case? I don't know. They were they were pretty good. I mean, the crazy thing, I think earlier I said that we were up three games to one. That's not true. We we swept them two games in New York, and then they came to Atlanta, and they swept us. You know, so then we had to go to New York, and we lost. But uh, they were pretty good. If you look at that team, it really started their run. I think they went, ended up winning five of the next seven or eight World Series. They were a pretty good team. I mean, that Indians team was probably one of the best-hitting teams I've been around. The, the Yankees just had all the pieces. I mean, yeah. they had the pitching and they had hitting and they did a lot of things really well and they had a lot of clutch hitting and they had good defense. So, um, you know, once you get to that point, everybody's really good. It's, now it's just a matter of just those small things that happened. There were, I could point back to this ball was just barely foul. This ball was just barely fair. This guy, this was a strike, but they called it a ball. That was a ball, they called it a strike. That was a ball that just went underneath the guy's glove or he just dove and just missed it. I mean, there are a lot of things that, that have to happen for you to win a World Series. And, um, you know, we, I think you could probably talk to any of my teammates and they would all say there's no reason in the world we shouldn't have two back-to-back -back World Series. And then, um, you know, but it's just not that easy. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, how long did it take you to get off, get over the loss in '96? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's. Is it harder on me. a player or a fan? It's probably harder on a fan. <laughs> I'll tell you, '71, the '71 series against the Pirates that the Orioles lost, that still bothers me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think anybody, anybody would say that it doesn't bother them. I could include the players because we knew that we just. We had it right there, and yeah. um, there were just a few things that happened. If you think about Lairitz's home run, and, and then you think about just uh, a couple plays that happened that you knew could have gone either way. I mean, you just you play, you replay all that stuff. Sure. In your in your head. Um. Okay, so years ago, uh, we went to that uh, a church in Virginia Beach, Spring Branch Community Church. Michael Simone was the pastor. I mentioned him a little earlier to you. And um, he brought in a former chaplain for the Washington Redskins one Sunday. And that chaplain said um, that after the Redskins won the Super Bowl, the, um, they got a shower and afterward, you go up, I don't know what you call them, the ramp where you'd go to see the field. And there was a player up there just looking at the field. And the chaplain walked up to him and said, what are you thinking? And the player said, is this all there is? Mm. And then of course, Tom Brady was on, I think 60 minutes years ago after winning three Super Bowls. And he said that, that he wonders, isn't there more than this? Is, isn't there more than this? And the guy said, well, what's the answer? He said, I wish I knew, mm. I wish I knew. Mm. Um, after you won this, the, the World Series in 95, I mean, did you have any of those kind of feelings? Was it just all euph euphoric? Did anyone have those kind of feelings? I'm sure some of the guys did. For me, I was a believer at the time, so I, I didn't. I didn't ask those questions. Mm -hmm. I knew that there were probably people that were asking those, because how could you not? I mean, you reached the pinnacle of your of your profession. This is what you've been striving for. You know, wh why wouldn't you ask those questions? So when I hear people like Tom Brady say that. I would be in the same boat if I did, if I wasn't a believer. But for me, the most telling uh, response was, "Hey, let's while we're talking, let's yeah. walk out." Yeah, there. I was going to say the most telling response for me was when you after we won the series. It probably wasn't a week or two that somebody, a fan or a friend or something, would say, "Hey, you guys going to do it again?" And I'm thinking, mm. oh my gosh, you know what it just took to to win that one? And now I'm not even thinking about the second one. But sure enough, you get to spring training, you get into the season, and now your mind starts to go. Because you know what? First and foremost, you're a competitor. And you know that uh, when one season's over with, it's time to compete for the second one. So we were, we were geared up and ready to go for that next year. And of course, we went all the way back to the World Series again. And you know, this team had been on that on that track, they went to the World Series in 91, they went to it in 92. We were super close in 93, so that's just something as competitors we did year in and year out. 
and uh, but I could see if you weren't a, if you weren't a Christian then uh, you would be seeking those answers for sure mm. hey we're, now we're coming up to a pretty awesome a pretty awesome spot right now um, what do you think about this yeah we'll show everybody here in just a second right I wasn't uh, watching a lot of baseball at the time um, back when this happened, but but since working for the Braves and having so many alumni that were a part of it It's a it's a pretty special pretty special place Folks what you're looking at is the fence over which Hank Aaron hit home run number 715 and Became the home run champ over Babe Ruth April 8th 1974. I was watching the game that night I mean if you weren't watching it, you still had uh networks saying you know we interrupt this you know when, when hank aaron would get up so you could see it so this is the very spot now that fence right there is that the fence itself yeah probably yeah and was it, it covered was chain no it was not it was chain link it really I would was chain to run and try to climb that fence oh so is, is this the same thing it looked just like this uh i believe so now we didn't um they may have reinforced it but uh, -huh. uh we did not have that type of fence. The guys that we always, uh, fence we always had, had padding on it for the most part because yeah. guys were jumping up. But if you if you look at the video clips, there was a chain, chain link fence. That's true because someone, one of the guys in the bullpen caught the ball, right? Yeah, yeah. And so Tom House, one of um, one of our relief pitchers actually caught it. I just don't know if that's the actual fence that, uh, that was there. And all of this stuff put here in honor of uh, Hank, after his death, recent death. Mm. Mm. Okay. Well, wow. What a memorable spot. <laughs> what a cool spot. I'm glad they kept it like this. I'm going to get on the other side of you. Yeah. Yeah, this is cool. I'm surprised you hadn't been out here. I think I've been out here one time, and that's when, um, when I had some family come back in after they'd already torn down the stadium. And we were in we were in uh, uh, Turner Field there. We came back and checked it out because you know this was a lot of parking for for the ball games yeah. for Turner Field. So we came out here just to look at the wall and try to figure out where everything was. This was before they put the field in. How did how did you uh, how did you feel when they tore the stadium down? All the memories. And... Yeah, it's kind of tough, but we knew exactly what they were building and we knew how special it was to have you know a, a brand new stadium and that was something that we got to experience at, at truest but uh for us as ball players knowing that we were going from a an old 60s uh stadium that was dual purpose to one that was going to be designed specifically for us we were pretty excited about it so even though you know it had some had some good memories we were still excited about what was going to happen in the new stadium you know those old multi-purpose stadiums they they were kind of cool like i grew up in baltimore and the baltimore colts and the orioles would play there but you know when when you'd see whether you'd go to a colts game or on you'd see something on television watch a football game you see the baseball diamond it's like oh can't wait for baseball season <laughs> one of the first games i ever went to was at riverfront watching johnny bench oh, in 76 man. after they'd won won the world series and the big red machine so yeah i'm I'm very familiar with those and kind of grew up watching that as well. All right, well, we're at another special spot right now, and this is home plate. And this is where Hank Aaron was standing over to the right mm -hmm. when he hit number 715. And um, this is where the, the slide with Sid Bream occurred. What was That's that, right. 1992? Yep. Right here. 92 bounced a lot of flip, uh, balls around this plate. Did you ever uh, hit someone intentionally? Um, I say? probably threw at one person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ask, sometimes you ask, have to. Sometimes it's just much. part of uh, protecting your teammates. So, yeah, I, I can't say I ever just drilled somebody on purpose, but I tried to send a couple messages sometime. Sometimes you got to do that, especially if they're if they're sending messages themselves, then sometimes you got to send one back. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Well, what's what, one more question for you? What, what's life like after playing? Well, that, it, it's a tough adjustment. I mean, you think about stuff that you do every day 
that you did to prepare for the season, uh, to prepare as a pitcher, uh, just to compete, and then all of a sudden that's that's kind of taken away, and you have to readjust to a new schedule. I, I can honestly say I was probably depressed for about a year, thinking that I was going to wake up and uh, and do the same thing for the rest of my life. That I wasn't going to spring training. I wasn't going to be traveling, because you know you get you get really wound up like a rubber band. I mean, the, between what you get used to from going to spring training to the season to different. To different uh, cities it, it can be kind of exciting but it also is just habit so as you get into that ritual of what a season's like and then all of a sudden you do that for you know 15 20 years and that's gone it's, it's a big adjustment mm. and so I, I can honestly say I would would not want to go back to that because I know how stressful it was but I remember after it was done I just didn't know how I was gonna adjust I have a friend Mike DeVito he, he played nine years in the NFL um, he was one of my students for a while at HBU, he did a master's thing, he's, he's doing a PhD now in philosophy. Brilliant guy, really a cool guy. Anyway, he played nine years in the NFL with the Jets and Chiefs and uh, he retired early. You know, he didn't want to mess his body up too much and concussions and, concussions yeah. and all that. But he, he said, he told me a couple months ago, it was really hard the first couple of years mm -hmm. for him. You know, he just really wanted to be back and but had to resist it. But Yeah, he'll be paychecks thankful. get smaller. <laughs> Body gets stiffer, <laughs> so there's a lot that happens. <laughs> uh, well, thanks, Greg. Thanks yeah. for sharing these moments. Yeah, it's been fun. Cool. Thanks for bringing me out. Yeah, God bless you, brother. Thank you. So, okay, you get into the, the minors, you you, you uh, climb up to the majors, and you guys have to be faced with all sorts of temptations as as ball players. What are some what 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 goes on? What well, goes on? What kind of temptations does a follower of Jesus face in the major leagues? You're wondering who my favorite baseball player is in the whole world? I'll tell you who it is. What do you think about that, Greg? What do you think about that? That's pretty good. You might be one of one. <laughs> the fan club. <laughs> well, I'm sure your wife feels the same That's way. That's right. That's, and my dad. <laughs> and your dad. <laughs>